going to hand down the what's been provided as the Thank you, Your Honor. note and challenge. Your Honor, and I would just ask to, to clarify, it is then the holding of this court that uh, someone can bring a lawyer into the courtroom say this is the original note and the launch and that that meets the definition of beneficiary. You, you kind of said that, but you didn't go that full range there. Are you saying that all you have to do, because under Mr. Glowney's theory, the deed of trust will follow the note, all you have to do is show that note and that meets the definition of beneficiary? Well, this, it, this wasn't a trial with the introduction of evidence, counsel. This is a summary judgment motion where what the court concluded is that there's no genuine issue of material fact. With regard to them being a beneficiary, I mean, you clearly said holder, but his argument was based on and had to be based on beneficiary. And what, I, what I was referring to is the language in Bain that indicates um, beneficiary means holder. Uh, so it's one of the... Um, holder of a promissory note can be represented by an agent. And so I'm not sure if you trace it backwards. I, I, I'm not certain that That's I'm what you're lying. That, that, that's good, just so we got it clear. language right. in vain. Right. And with regard to the presentation of the documents today. Okay. And notwithstanding the fact that there is no evidence that they were an agent. I mean, I think they admit that they are a third party contract. Um, Mr. Glowney, you, you st stood as if there was something you wanted to add. Well, well I, I think the court addressed it. I, the court has ruled that a summary judgment motion there's no genuine issue of material fact. The council now wants to ask sort of an advisory. He wants to kind of ask some other questions, get a statement that he can take up and say, well, now you made this statement. I think you have a record, you have a ruling. That's all summary judgment requires. Okay, what you're about to see now is Attorney John Glowney and me discussing, uh, you know, the burdens of production and persuasion on this matter. Like, whose duty is it to prove that the chain of title is is true, basically? And, you know, unlike certain other attorneys who will remain nameless right now, this guy is professional, and we had a great time, you know. Uh, we may disagree on some things, but we respect each other. And so just take a look. It's like a chain. The court says that's what you're telling everybody you want to do. But if that's not what they want, he got the million. Five. People are people. Note three. He got the million. Note three says he got the million five in the clip from now. But note three, that's not that's not what the court asks. The question is, is that not very smart? And and it's how can how can people ever prove that the, the, the note in in uh, the lodge is a loose one? Gentlemen, I'm having to carry this. You can prove that it's forged. You can prove that it's not. Can I keep you on the same street by legal messages so I don't have to carry it in the car? Uh, like I said, I, I got to read more of this case, but I, I don't know, Mr. Staffney, did you, did, did the homeowner anticipate uh, taking depositions of people no, in yeah. the chain yes, of... Yes, we did. We've done it in all the other cases. And then that would, in some way, you're thinking, in your offer of proof, you're probably saying that during that process, then right. it would come out that those documents were not original. Yes. I get it. I get it. But you couldn't get there. Right. Because it couldn't be discovered. Right. It was truncated. I get it. Huh? Of course, you got to disagree with that. But no, you have to agree that you wanted to do it. You got to agree on stuff. Oh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, you got a good weekend. Yeah, yeah, same to you. Have a good weekend. You got a good ruling out of, uh, out of uh, Jones, I saw. Yeah, well, I mean, you get, all, you get to go to trial. Yeah, I know, but. Uh, but we need to settle it. Is that right? Counsel, you were just involved in a summary judgment hearing, I guess the second part of a summary judgment hearing, in the case of Lamelson versus Northwest Trustee Services. Uh, Judge Lindy ruled against your client a moment ago, and basically, from what I caught today, the, your opposing counsel said, we've got the original note and an allonge, and that's it. Therefore, we can foreclose. Could you comment on what just happened? Yeah, that's the travesty of the court's rulings, and courts are ruling in different ways. What happened in this case is a lawyer came up 
and said, my client owns the note and the alarms, therefore, my client owns the note and the launch, and therefore we had every right to uh, take his house non-judicially. And we're just saying, no, you just can't come in with a document that uh, may well have been fabricated, and we presented evidence that it was, and say, you get to take the house. But what will be very interesting is, uh, this was our attack against them, they never did uh, uh, attempt to foreclose. And right, I see under that. our rules of uh, civil procedure, uh, unless they now move to foreclose in this action, of course, uh, they will be precluded or should be precluded from moving to judicially foreclose against Mr. Lemelson because it was a compulsory counterclaim. That's one argument, of course. I know the statute is running, of course. But now back to the issue of these, the authenticity of these documents. I know your expert witness, Nye Laval, had uh, noted that it was more likely than not that these were forgeries. And, and he did it on two bases. Yes. One, he looked at the documents themselves. And what you had is you have a, uh, a note, and it has been file punched at the top. Right. And there were weird file punches, like it's gone in and out many times. And then there's another one on the alarms and it's different. And you can clearly say, see that the file punch here is different than the file punch here from the copies. Plus, you can also tell that it does not appear that they've, they've been affixed. But he also says, based on his expertise and experience in dealing with select portfolio systems and Bank of America, he knows that these people cannot be trusted. Therefore, you can't rely right. on their declarations. But, but ultimately, of course, the judge didn't listen to that, and you were not allowed to conduct any discovery to prove uh, that it was more likely than not that these that the purported real note and and Allonge were indeed forgeries. Right. Right. There was that issue, and then also there was the issue of. And I asked the attorney today. I said, "Who authenticated that?" And he said, "Well, we don't have to." But I said, "But the authenticity of it has been drawn into question." But anyway, uh, let's well, go to the next. Well, especially issue. because of MERS. See, the right. well, only yeah, way the, MERS, yeah. the only way they get uh, any possession of the note is through a claim that MERS, not on behalf of. A, I'm down with that. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> the only the only claim they have to the note comes from MERS. Basically, MERS, not as a nominee or as an agent for anybody, but on its own behalf, assigns both the deed of trust, which it cannot not be a beneficiary of, and the note. The language says and the note. And Two other courts, at least in the past two, within the last two weeks, have said that alone is enough to prevent a foreclosure unless you come forward with some other evidence, right, which they did not. Right, because MERS can't transfer a ham sandwich. Right, yeah, exactly. I get it. Okay, thank you, counsel. Too bad the judge didn't. I see. See you later. Indeed. I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs>